you're letting us get it all. This series does go into the origins of the band and the journey of the band, but it also takes us through your health cha challenges. Yeah. They type feeling today. Day to day. Yeah. Day to day. Yeah. You know, I'm working hard on it. I, I flew here to California yesterday mm -hmm. before I got on the plane, vocal therapy, you know? So I don't do anything if I can get that in first, mm -hmm. you know? Nothing else matters until I, I work on getting better. Um, it's up to God at this point, mm -hmm. you know? I've done everything I can do. It was um, very raw to listen to you try to sing again and to listen to you, you know, struggle. If, if I, you know, if I'm being yeah. very honest. <laughs> I just didn't think about it. <laughs> From your point. Yeah, I, and, and I am trying to get into your head and think when you're doing that and you know you're struggling. And yeah. you're... The legendary rock icon John Bon Jovi, who has been rumored to be losing his voice in recent years. Sounds like he's super tired. And they're not going to be able to tour anymore. There's no way. You said at one point in the documentary, you know, I may never tour again. I may never do this again. My heart sunk a little bit when Mine I heard too. you say that. Mine too, yeah. but I won't fake it. <laughs> My microphone works. I won't compromise who we are as a band live because I, I like to think we're a pretty darn good band. And uh, I won't, I won't. The legacy mattered too much. It's something though when you do have to think about your own mortality. It's and you not said really. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, up until 50, I really was bulletproof. Yeah. I could do anything. 50 to 60 was challenging. The 60s have been hard work. But I'm not giving up. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not quitting. I'm not even slowing down. And, and to be clear, I can sing. Yes. I sang on the new record. I, I've done Music Cares and nailed it. You know, and there, there was a great little thing that came out of Music Cares. On this Saturday morning when I woke up after that night, it was the first time in a decade the only voice in my head was mine. Fear wasn't there, doubt wasn't there. And Dorothea texted the kids and said, he's back. I love the fact too, you know, now your sons, your sons have seen this successful image of you two, and now they're following in your footsteps, both of them. Ah, uh, I, I, yeah, I have, I have several, uh, three sons and a daughter, remember, so um, different chapter in life now. Yeah. It's very interesting. No one warned you about this chapter, so let me tell you about the future. Okay. <laughs> the future's scary. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best piece of advice that you've given them? We saw the whole family out supporting Millie at the premiere, which yeah. I, we love. But what's the best piece of advice that you've given them about like entering in to this space? They're not gonna listen, to be honest with you. They're on their own journey. Yeah. And, and if anything, then I realized that I was on my own journey and I wouldn't really have listened to my parents either. Mm -hmm. no. But my parents were supportive. So that's probably the best thing I can lend to my kids is to be supportive of them on their journeys. And they gotta figure it out. You know, I, I, I think I'm the ghost of Christmas future and I have all the answers, which I do. You do. <laughs> the energy of the band, undeniable. Like a freight train coming at you. I know this has been two years in the making, but why now was the time that you said, okay, I can look back at all this? The 40th. Okay. It's a round number. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I think 40 years is worth taking a look back. Um, 50, I think at 50, you sort of wonder, will I make it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it was the 38th anniversary-ish when these thoughts came across my mind, you yeah. know, and I thought, Time to archive things, time to consider a documentary, time to think about what's the plan. And and this all came together. Listen, I, you have been on a journey for sure in your career and in life and all of that, but I have to imagine it, it kind of has to be hard to open it all back up again and really take a deep look. It wasn't hard to do. Okay. For a number of reasons. One is I, I, don't, I have very few regrets. Mistakes are, part of life mm -hmm. and part of the journey. Mm -hmm. Also, having no creative control over the edit, truly not wanting a puff piece, giving the director and the producer their opportunity to create this film. I was more focused on the archiving. I was more focused on writing a new record. I was more focused on my health. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, look you in the eye and tell you, 
I have not seen the four episodes. It was real fun. And I thought everybody else was enjoying it too. Wrong. And I know that, that throughout the journey of Bon Jovi, you and Richie did a lot of it together, a lot of the songwriting yeah, 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 together, yeah. a lot of all of those things together. And the mm -hmm. docu-series does go into you all, and it goes into Richie leaving the band. I don't regret leaving, but I regret how I did it. You said that you didn't connect with him in the making of this, but we did see him. Have you talked since? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He came to my house and we watched that six or nine months ago, whatever it is now, mm -hmm. the first three episodes together at my house. So, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people keep saying this kind of, there was never a fight. It was never about money. It was never about a girlfriend. It was never, he had issues, you know, he had a lot of issues that he had to deal with and he literally didn't show up. You're playing to 20,000 people and there's a black hole on the stage and you didn't come the next night or the next night or the next night. So it's been 11 years and he never came back into a room with the band and said hi. So, but he does say, he maintains yeah, in the documentary yeah. that you all know exactly why he didn't show up. We, the world knows why. <laughs> yeah. There's never been a fight. You gotta be able to sing and play. And you gotta come to work. I'm excited. Are we telling the truth or are we gonna lie? What are we gonna do? I'm bad medicine is what I need. A lot of people are going to watch this too because they want to know and understand and like, like get I've information. Like I've said a thousand times, you yeah. know, there was never a fight, mm -hmm. but I've made four albums. I know how to do this. You seem really good. And, and so maybe it's a lesson because maybe it's something you can teach me too on how to heal. Because healing and really like forgiving and moving on is a hard thing to do, John. Yes, it is. It's a hard thing to do. It so takes a lot of lessons. Legendary. <laughs> But you are releasing another studio album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was capable of singing on the whole record. I did the music cares. And I jumped up with Armin Van Buren. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. It's gonna come out in June. Yes. It's called Forever. Yes. You've said, I love this, you said it's a return to joy. Joy. The simple joy of being able to write songs that are happy. You know, coming through 2020 and our last studio record, the collective we, everyone watching television tonight, lived an experience together called COVID. Mm -hmm. and, and in America, the election and everything that was going on in this wicked world. So what could I write about? I became the reporter, I was the narrator, I was telling the stories. And so they were um, simple observations, if you will. Non-judgmental, but observations, yeah. true journalism to, you know, in, in songwriting form. Compounded by the surgery, I've had these two years to go down deep again. Mm -hmm. And when I started the writing process and you're opening up that vessel, and you say, okay, Lord, what do we got? And, and I wrote a song called Hollow Man on the new record. And he says, what do you sing when the song's been sung? One thing you can't be in this world is a quitter. You said in the documentary that you're always looking for that song that's gonna cement your career. I think it was a little bit of an older interview where you yeah. said that. You've made that song. Which one is it? I don't know that there's one, but okay. I think it's always the next one. Mm. It's always the next one. Okay. You know, I, I, like I said, it's just, I don't know what I'm gonna think of the album forever until two years from now. Okay, okay. that's I'm the time frame you it. give yourself. Yeah, it'll take two years from now. Mm -hmm. You know, I can look back on the 2020 album now and go, it stands up to me, I like yeah. it. But it takes that two years to be removed. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about legacy? for a second. What do you hope your legacy will be? Or what do you think that it is when in terms of Bon Jovi? That's gonna be up to the people, you know, that are gonna listen to the music or wanna mm -hmm. read about it or watch a film about it. Um, that's up to them. You know, they, they could think little of it or a lot of it. I don't know, it's up to the individual. I think that the same way I may have been more influenced by a band that didn't mean a lot to the public, but they meant everything to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about Southside Johnny. He meant everything to me, yeah. you know? Um, so it, the, the legacy of the band is going to be up to the individual, but the good news is I was only here to tell the truth. I grew up in public. 
I was 21 when I got a record deal. I have the same record deal with the same company 41 years later. And, and I'm still just telling the truth. So Bon Jovi the band, but what about John the man? What is your legacy? It's still being written. You know, okay. it's, it's about the, the body of work, but that's just one facet of it. It's what I do, it's not who I am. And mm -hmm. the rest of it is who I am, which is the family, the philanthropy, the, the rest of it. The philanthropy that you do, that you and Dorothea do, has become it's, good. its own entity, you know, and, and is really impressive. I mean, thanks. incredibly impressive. Yeah. Um, how did that, like, was it something that you saw at home and you just decided to pay it forward? Was I it think something those seeds that you are guys in you got as it. a child? You okay. know, those seeds are planted in you to, you know, the, by your, your parents or your upbringing or where you were brought up and at what time. Mm -hmm. But then, um, what you did with it was going to become something completely different. I, I was selfish as you could be at 20 and 25 because I had single-minded focus on one thing, going yeah. to be in a rock and roll band, you know? <laughs> but your perspectives change as you grow in public and, and get better or yeah. else you're a shallow, you know, kiddie pool. Exactly. So by 30 and 40 and 50 and 60, I would hope that you got a little more world. Well, you got a lot. That's for sure. Thanks. I just want to ask you because I, I love, we love when we see celebrities in the wild who are actually friends. And I dig the fact that you and Bruce Springsteen are just real deal <laughs> friends. Yeah. And you said that you've gotten even closer as you guys have gotten older. Yeah. Like what does his friendship mean to you? And Well, it means a lot. You know, I mean, he's, he's, he's obviously the pinnacle of success as a songwriter and a performer and a, and a singer and all of that kind of stuff and as a leader of men. But he's also wise and thoughtful, and um, and he's always open to new ideas, and he's also open to listening, mm -hmm. you know. And so here's a guy that's a, a 13, 12, 13 years older than I am. So he's he's experienced a lot more down that same path. So there's not a lot of people that have experienced things at this level that I can talk to, or that he can talk to, yeah. to be honest. So you know, yeah, we talked about it publicly now because a lot of people have seen it. In, there's that odd, you know, uh, Bigfoot pictures of the two of us at stoplights. <laughs> Damn. Exactly. Um, but we take these drives and it means the world to me because there's no radio, there's no phones, it's mm -hmm. just the two of us and we'll go for 100 miles and talk about stuff. But when I was going through this, it, he and Southside were big shoulders to lean on. Mm -hmm. Big shoulders to lean on. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get through this kind of conversation. Well, you know, I, I'm praying for your healing for just as a man, but also as a fan. Thanks. And I can't wait to hear the new record. Amen. Yeah,